Yeah. I'd like to commend uh, the, His Holiness Pope Francis for his uh, very insightful encyclical, which has uh, brought us all here today. I'd like to also commend the Pontificate of uh, Science and Social Sciences for the uh, opportunity given to us to share perspectives on the topic modern slavery and climate change. Uh, human trafficking is no doubt a devastating crime which debases the very essence of humanity and is targeted at the most vulnerable in the society, particularly women and children. Nigeria is rated as the source, transit, and country for various forms of trafficking. And indeed, we constitute significant proportions of numbers of trafficking victims rescued worldwide. The use of deceit, debt bondage, threats, and resort to diabolical means to control victims is quite problematic. The purpose, of course, being to create fear in the minds of victims, preventing them from cooperating with law enforcement agencies and social workers. We strongly recognize that human trafficking constitutes an ob obstacle to the attainment of the fundamental principles of human rights as enshrined in our constitution and undermines our human security and social development potentials. I represent an agency called the National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking Persons, uh, Nigeria. And the agency was set up by an act of parliament as a specific multidisciplinary agency to deal with the scourge of human trafficking with an extensive mandate which uniquely encapsulates the four P approaches of prevention, protection and assistance, prosecution and partnerships. In implementing its mandate, the agency adopts a deliberate approach of mobilizing the whole of government and the whole of society. The whole of government approach identifies trafficking as an attainment of government's developmental strategies and accordingly requires mobilization of government apparatus at federal, state, and local government levels. To this end, the agency has adopted a strategic initiative to advocate for integration of counter-trafficking initiatives into development planning at all levels. The whole of society approach emphasizing the imperative of partnerships and collaboration with core stakeholders, including non-governmental actors and the public at large. One of the challenges the agency has had to tackle is the perception about the real effects of trafficking. Perhaps as a result of poverty and ignorance, trafficking is still generally viewed by many as a means to improve their social economic circumstances. We have therefore impact on massive and innovative public enlightenment initiatives to highlight the more shocking aspects of human trafficking. Um, we have a key objective of our anti-trafficking response is to ensure greater understanding and appreciation by critical partners to ensure sustainability of programs aimed at addressing the issue. We have established a national stakeholders consultative forum comprising law enforcement agencies, social welfare institutions, governments at all levels, civil society organizations, and development partners. We periodically conduct data disaggregated research that helps to provide useful insight into social cultural practices, customs, prejudices, and other factors which reinforce vulnerability to trafficking in Nigeria. This is quite important to help us divine, design appropriate interventions we clearly recognize that legislation alone is not sufficient to tackle this menace. And so routinely conduct advocacy to political and opinion leaders at national, state, local government, and political levels to facilitate cultural change and secure political support for our mandate. Our anti-trafficking legislation and policies adheres to the principle of non-criminalization of victims and provides for their protection and welfare, irrespective of immigration status. The agency has nine transit shelters where it provides opportunities to victims, maximizing their opportunities for comprehensive recovery through counseling, rehabilitation, empowerment, and reintegration. Furthermore, the agency, the country has developed a policy on protection and assistance to victims, a model which has been replicated by ECOWAS, resulting in the ECOWAS Regional Policy on Protection and Assistance to Victims of Trafficking in, Afri in West Africa. Recognizing also that migration management has a role to play in addressing modern slavery, the government of Nigeria recently reenacted its immigration law and adopted a migration policy. 
as well as a labor migration policy. In addition, we have also enacted the Violence Against Persons Law, which among other things, abolishes customs and prejudice and practices which reinforce vulnerabilities. I would also like to comment very briefly on the topic of climate change. The problem of accelerated climate change is likely to result in climate-related disputes and result in further poverty for large sections of the global population. Climate change interacting with a tendency to urbanization worldwide means greater vulnerability of members of lower social classes, especially in peri-urban areas and urban decline in many areas. This could, be an, this could also have an effect both in the global north and south migration pattern. Closely interacting with the above is the problem of stable livelihoods. Increased vulnerability of affected populations to exploitation within the context of a much less resilient ecosystem. The impact of climatic changes in the country such as Nigeria can be vast, resulting in destabilization of some stable ecosystems such as the Sahel Sahara with resultant impact on neighboring territories. Preliminary studies have been conducted on the vulnerability of various sectors of the Nigerian economy, namely human settlement and health, water resources, wetlands and freshwater ecosystems, energy, industry, etc. And the outcome showed virtually all the sectors analyzed manifested some evidence of vulnerability to climate change. None were affect, unaffected. None will remain unaffected by changes to climatic conditions. In this regard, through the Federal Ministry of Environment, the National Emergency Management Agency, and several other government agencies, several projects have been implemented by the Great Green World Initiative to sensitize population and address the issue of climatic change in our country, pushing the issue of recycling, energy conservation, care for the environment, and strengthening moral and ethical decisions towards our environment. No doubt, the combined effects of these twin emergencies is horrifying and should propel governments to further commit to global efforts to tackle these issues. Nigeria remains strongly committed to meeting its international and domestic obligations in this regard and will continue to support global initiatives to tackle human trafficking and climate change. I would like to make a few recommendations, um, one of which is equitable nations of the global south promoting effective international and domestic criminal justice systems broadly and specifically to combat modern slavery, including human as a component of crimes targeting vulnerability in persons. Strengthening already existing internationally accepted intellectual morality, including the emphasis of, on human rights, the rule of law, social justice, conservation and environmental protection as moral necessities. This must be embraced by state and non-state actors. I'd like to conclude to, to note that measures to help minimize vulnerabilities that create opportunities for modern slavery to thrive and the issue of climate change have been given attention in the United Nations proposed sustainable development goals. It is our firm hope that good practices that will be gathered from participants today will contribute to resolutions to strengthen the proposed goals and its subsequent implementation. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you very much. Thank you.